Funny how you don't hear the deniers deliberately mistaking weather for climate. You want climate? A piece of ice has broken off Greenland. It contains as much water as will flow through every faucet in America over the next four months. Oops! A literal ice island, 100 miles square, four times the size of Manhattan, has broken away from the Peterman Glacier, which is one of Greenland's two largest remaining glaciers. This is the actual satellite imagery. You have to send up a crew to fix that. This, the animation of an ice island that will likely enter the Narry Strait, which lies be between Greenland and Canada, the ice island might eventually move south and block shipping, or it could break up into smaller pieces, or it could fuse with land. We'll ask our guest what relationship this event has, or potential relationship with climate change. But the Obama administration's current relationship with climate change is far more difficult to discern. The White House's top energy advisor says there's still a chance of climate change legislation this year, possibly during a post-election lame duck session. But it's hard to see how that happens when that very legislation has been shelved in the Senate because Democrats did not think they could get the votes. Let's turn now to the chief ice scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland, Dr. Jay Zwally. Dr. Zwally, thanks for your time tonight. Good evening, Keith. To call this a, a truly uh, gigantic chunk of ice sounds uh, silly, considering the enormity of what might be happening here. Put it in your own terms so we understand what we're dealing with. Well, you said a little while ago that icebergs come off of Greenland all the time. Mm -hmm. They do. Approximately half of the ice that leaves Greenland each year comes out directly into the ocean and icebergs. The other half melts on land. And this is a very big chunk. Usually we have a stability between the ice that's flowing down the glaciers. And in this case, there's a floating part of the tongue. What's happened is that the floating part has been getting thinner. Mm. We believe it's been getting thinner because of warming temperatures of the ocean that increase the melting. So by itself, this is not that significant but it's a part of a pattern that's happening in Greenland. We've seen dramatic changes in Greenland over the last 10 years. We've seen an increase in the melting, we've seen accelerating glaciers, and we see a loss of ice from Greenland each year compared to what's coming in. So the, the magic question here, obviously, is what are the chances are that this has some, uh, uh, that climate change has had some impact on this? I think it's 100% hmm. that this is a result of climate change. We see the temperatures rising in Greenland. The temperatures are rising about two degrees centigrade in 10 years. That's three and a half degrees Fahrenheit. The changes that are taking place in the Arctic and in Greenland, the global warming, is about three to four times greater than it is over the whole world. Mm. So these are having dramatic impacts on the ice in Greenland, increasing the melting, accelerating the glaciers, and the sea ice in the Arctic Ocean has been getting thinner and thinner. Doctor, do you find in, in your professional experience here that, that part of the problem with this is that, number one, is that use, the unfortunate use of the term global warming instead of the more uh, encompassing term uh, climate change, but the other one that I always contend with is you can't talk to people about this because they don't seem to, to grasp that there is a significant difference between weather and climate, that a snowy winter does not mean that there is not global warming or climate change. Exactly. Uh, people are often very confused by this. The changes that take place from one year to the next are not that significant. It's part of the long-term change. When you start having warmer summers most of the years, this 10 years compared to previously, mm -hmm. when you see these patterns of change, and I find more and more people that I talk to, especially when you go to the Arctic and talk to the people that live in Greenland, they can see the changes that are taking place. And many people now are beginning to realize that the climate of the Earth is very different in Washington, D.C., for example, than it was 20, 30 years ago. And speaking of Washington, D.C., and the climate of a different kind there, politics has often screwed up serious scientific concerns. Is there any way for the clarity of scientific facts to win out on this issue, do you think? Well, it's very frustrating as a scientist because so many people that I talk to seem to decide the science based upon their political beliefs. Mm -hmm. If they're conservative, they don't believe in it. If they're liberal, they believe in climate warming. And there's a lot of disinformation that has come out over the last 10 years. So many people have heard about natural variability. There is a lot of natural variability in the climate system. Changes that have taken place due to volcanoes, changes in the sun, but we're observing those things now. We know that the changes that are taking place now are not due to volcanic activity. They're not due to changes in the sun. We observe these and we monitor them. 
what is happening is that temperature is rising. We measure the temperatures, we see it rising, and all the models, the climate models, have very good predictions that match the observations. How much time do we have left before the predictions become reality and the politics become irrelevant? Well, they're already becoming a reality. Mm -hmm. The impact, sea level is rising. Uh, the rate of sea level rise is now about 12, 14 inches in the next 100 years. And that's about 50% greater than it was 10, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. These changes are taking place. And Greenland is contributing to sea level rise now. Small glaciers around the ocean, around the earth, and the um, ocean expansion. These changes are taking place. We need to take this seriously and do something about reducing the greenhouse gases that go into the atmosphere. Dr. Jay Zwally, uh, Chief Ice Scientist at uh, the NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Great thanks uh, for the grim news. Thank you. That's